Hello everyone, my name is Damian and in this video I'm going to show you how Gokator with GoPixel software can be integrated in the PLC. For today's presentation I will be using Gokator 2520 in profile mode. As a simple program I created an inspection that fits two lines in two separate profile areas. For that I have used two profile line tools. As a third tool, I have used Feature Intersect that takes those two lines and finds their intersection point. As a result, we can get an X and a Z positions of that point. Those results can be then sent to the PLC. Communication protocols are available on the left side in Controls section under Industrial tab. GoPixel supports multiple protocols for communicating with sensors over Ethernet. You can choose from Modbus, Ethernet IP, Ethernet ASCII and Profinet. I will start with Ethernet ASCII protocol. In order to be able to use the Ethernet ASCII communication protocol, we have to enable it in the Industrial tab. Then we can see two main sections, Settings and Connections. In the settings section, we can enable asynchronous mode, which means that results are sent automatically as soon as they are available. Otherwise, sending a command is needed to retrieve the results. When asynchronous output mode is enabled, the data output format can be chosen. We can choose from standard, standard with stamp or custom. When using custom format, we can format the data in a very flexible way. Here we will be sending timestamp, frame index and two values and decision of the results. We can also specify the command delimiter, a limiter termination and invalid results value. Additionally, TCP IP control port can be configured. In the connections section, we can choose the data that we want to send. Firstly, we can add stamp information. As you can see, it's now available in the connections map. Then we can add our inspection results. After that, they will have specific IDs that we can use in a data format. Here we will be sending the X position, which has ID of 2, and also the Z position, which has an ID of 3. When using Ethernet ASCII protocol, our external device behaves as TCP client. Connecting to GoPixel requires IP address and control port specified. After successful connection, we can start sending control commands to the system. After sending start command, we can see that the system already started and is sending the results. Received message contains timestamp, frame index, value, and decision of the first result and value and decision of the second result. Sending stop command will simply stop the system. As a response message, we received OK status. Changing job requires additional parameters specified. After command name and delimiter, we are adding the job name. If the status received is OK, the job will change to the desired one. Now let's go back to our main job by changing the commands argument. In our online manual, you can easily find more information about the communication protocols. With Ethernet ASCII, you can not only start or stop the sensor, but also send a software trigger, load different job, retrieve the results such as measurement values or decisions, also ask for a timestamp information, encoder value, frame index, what is more, you can also align the system or clear the alignment and in the end you can also read a lot of different parameters of the sensor or the system. Second communication protocol that I would like to show you is Profinet. We can start as before by enabling the protocol in industrial tab in GoPixel. From here, we can download the GSD file that can be used in Profinet master device, such as PLC or industrial robot. Please remember to keep the GSD file always up to date according to your GoPixel firmware version. In connections section, we can also add stamp data and measurement results to our buffers. 
After clicking on Insert Connection, Stamp data should be visible in the stamp scan output. When it comes to measurement results, we can choose All and click on Add Connections. This functionality will add all of our inspection results to the measurement scanned output automatically without the need of adding it one by one. All of the results have specified address and size. As you can see, the result value has a size of 4 bytes. Except measurement and stamp output, in Profinet there are also sensor group state, system state, command input, and command output registers with fixed size. After uploading GSD file in the PLC, adding the device in the topology network, setting the IP address and device name of GoPixel instance, we can take a look at different available buffers. The first buffer is control input. This is the right buffer available in GoPixel to control the sensor. On the first two bytes, there is a command sequence number. This is an optional parameter, but can be used to set a unique ID when sending the command in order to identify its status in the control output buffer. The next one byte is reserved for command identifier. It means the value that we are using to control the sensor. The rest of this buffer is reserved for command arguments that is used for specifying the job's name when loading another job in the system. The second buffer is called control output. In this buffer, on the first two bytes, we have command sequence number. This is the same number as in the control input that helps us to identify the status of the specific command. On the third byte, we have command status. So that means what was the status of the last send command. Now I will show you how to start and stop the system when sending a different commands. On the first byte, I am specifying the unique sequence number and then I am sending the command number one. That means to start the sensor. After writing it in the buffer, we can see that the system has started. In the control output, we see that the sequence number and the status that is successful. Specifying the another unique ID and also sending the to command, which means to stop the sensor, results in stopping the sensor and also receiving the to status in the control output. The next buffer available in GoPixel is system state. This is the read buffer that is constantly updating. On the first 8 bytes, there is a system uptime. Next one byte is the system state. The system state 0 means that the system is stopped and 1 means that the system is running. It can be easily checked with manually starting and stopping the GoPixel. Next one byte is reserved for the current job file name length and the next 64 bytes are the current job's file name. The last two bytes are the buffer count and buffer overflow. Next buffer available is sensor group state. In this buffer, we will have information about the current encoder position, the current sync time, and also alignment state, and information if the laser is enabled. Now I am physically turning on and off the laser so that you can see that the laser enabled value is changing. Next buffer in GoPixel is a stamp information. In this buffer, we have plenty of information about the last acquired frame. We can have a Z position, encoder position, timestamp, and frame index. The last is the digital output states. When it comes to the frame index, here we can see that the value is constantly iterating by one. The last buffer available in GoPixel is measurement. In this buffer, we can receive the measurement values that we specified in the tab in GoPixel. Here are the values of our specified results. Next industrial protocol is Ethernet IP. After enabling it in industrial tab, as always, more parameters show up. As in Profinet, from here we can download the EDS file that then can be uploaded in the PLC. 
What is more, we can also choose byte order from little or big endian and also the trigger override from disabled, cyclic or change of state. We can also enable message buffering. This option is useful when we expecting more results within a period shorter than the polling rate of the PLC. Exactly as before, we have to add our stamp and measurement results to the scan output table. It is possible to delete unwanted values by clicking the button with trash bin icon next to it. In this case, we can delete the angle results of the fitted lines. The last industrial protocol that is available in GoPixel is Modbus. There is only one specific option available here, buffering, which means the same as in Ethernet IP. In Modbus, we have one common buffer for control input, control output, system state and sensor group state tables. It can be extended by adding stamp and measurement results. As you can see, the address and size of each buffer is available. We can use the re-index option to change the offsets or addresses of each specific source. This functionality is also useful if you want to change the addresses after deleting some of the sources inside the buffer. You can then re-index so that there are no empty bytes between the values in the buffer. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like it. In case of any questions regarding GoPixel, PLC integration or our sensors, feel free to contact us.